So Craig, thank you so much for joining us on this segment for Case Western Reserve University's Women in Tech. Students were excited to hear that we were speaking with you and they submitted questions that we wove into this interview. So first up, we know that you earned your degree of computer science from Case Western Reserve University. What was most memorable about your time here? What I remember uh, most was how much I learned about uh, computers, computer sciences, and unfortunately, also what I didn't learn about getting along with people, about uh, human culture, that kind of thing. So great education, but because of my own failings, it was not well-rounded. What particular classes do you wish you would have had outside of computer science that would have helped? Um, back then, it would have included uh, conventional music and art appreciation courses, uh, let's say broad courses in uh, European culture, uh, women's studies had become a thing. I should have done some of all that because people might have helped me uh, uh, been more empathetic with other people. And I had a propensity for sometimes being a jerk and I would be less of a jerk. <laughs> if you could talk to your recently graduated self about what was to come, what would you share, what would you warn, and or what would you celebrate? I would uh, tell myself to listen to people better, to be less of a jerk, and that I was responsible for my own career. Um, in companies, especially larger corporations, your boss is supposed to be helping you plan your career, but that doesn't happen very much. You own that responsibility, you own your own branding, your own image. Was there a tugging moment for you to move from entrepreneurship to your philanthropic endeavors? Um, I really never was much of an entrepreneur. And there were two, well, there were three transitions which could have been painful. For example, deciding not to monetize everything like the bankers and VCs wanted me to do. I decided uh, I didn't need billions of dollars. Uh, maybe no one needs billions of dollars. And so I uh, stuck my neck out pretty far, and that was uh, kind of scary. Uh, beyond that, within a year, I had to step down from being CEO of uh, Craigslist because I realized that as a manager, I suck. Uh, that was kind of wrenching. But in all this, I was never an entrepreneur. I was a nerd who started something good committed to making sure it stayed good and then got out of the way when I realized that I needed a good manager in place. The jump from uh, business to philanthropy, that wasn't that hard because I had already been growing into that gradually over a five to 10 year period, depending on how you look at it. And life has kind of pushed me into my current position. As you're providing support to a variety of social causes, including trustworthy journalism and the information ecosystem, voter protection, women in technology, helping veterans and families, and those are just a few, is there a through line in the work that you do along with the foundation? Ultimately it means standing up for what our country is supposed to be about which we strive towards, like fairness and opportunity for everyone. We have a ways to go, and I'm trying to stand up for those values by standing up for the people best protecting those values, who are standing up for them, and who are more effective than I am in defending those, val those values. That includes rewarding people who put their life on the line for those values, like uh, veterans and their families, and it includes the people who are actually uh, taking a lot of risk to protect those values, like the people who uh, protected the integrity of our election, um, many of whom are now working at places like the Stanford Internet Observatory or Aspen Digital. Okay. And talking about the election, one of the things that the students noted were you focus a lot on women's issues and even the gender gap in the 2020 election. Why or how has supporting 
women in tech, women veterans, and women startups been such an important area of focus for you and your team? In terms of emotional investment, it's just the notion that uh, people should be fair with each other. Or as I learned in Sunday school, you want to treat people like you want to be treated. Pragmatically, I did see that in journalism and in protecting the country, women had taken on a somewhat greater role than men. A lot of the women on the uh, vanguard of fighting disinformation, a lot of the people in that area, probably the majority are women. And they are doing uh, new things. And one could argue they're doing a better job of it than the men in the space. Any thoughts on what it takes to make significant progress towards more equity opportunities? Here we're talking about widespread social change. And as a nerd, uh, I'm thinking people with social skills should talk about that. All I know is trying to follow through on the idea that you want to treat people like you want to be treated. So I do that. I try to do so visibly, loudly, and relentlessly. In IBM, we're told that's leadership by example, which is all I really need, really all I know how to do. Um, we need people who are much more charismatic and persuasive than I could ever be. And I really shouldn't try since a nerd striving in those areas would probably uh, make people's brains hurt, my own included. So when you talk about surrounding yourself by other people that bring things to the table, like what are some things or roles that should be part of the equation to create healthier, more inclusive workplaces? Um, there should be efforts in media telling the stories of people in groups which are underserved. And I uh, oh, do work along those lines by supporting people in like the Black Media Initiative at the CUNY Journalism School, then helping folks at the uh, Howard University Journalism School, Maynard Institute, a National Association of Black Journalists, and then the work Borealis uh, philanthropy is doing in the uh, racial equity and justice, justice effort, which is to say, I don't know what to do myself, but I can support people who know what they're doing, who are good at their job, and that way I have many few opportunities to screw things up. Uh, that dictates a lot of my philanthropic approach. If I find people who are good at their job at doing things and share power with them, share specifically influence and cash with them, that way they can do a good job. Uh, it prevents me from doing a bad job. And that means I can help people in another area do a good job. So all this is like a force multiplier. What are some examples of success, and let's call them needle moving, things that you're seeing a result of your support? Um, as far as uh, I can tell, the biggest area is that we've had some luck in the last election. Uh, the groups that I support, along with others, uh, governmental ones, prevented uh, much foreign interference in the last election. It forced it into the space of the domestic allies of our foreign adversaries, but now they've uh, been uh, better identified and people are networking to do something about the people working with our foreign adversaries. Uh, there was a great report on that issued yesterday by the Election Integrity Partnership out of places like Stanford and the University of Washington, uh, places like that. And with the election, a lot of conversation happened in and around fake news and thinking about technology and how to combat the spread of misinformation. What are your thoughts on that or what are things that you've brought to fruition in that regard? Don't give me any credit for uh, any of this. Uh, people uh, smarter than me are trying to address the problem by uh, dis by decreasing the reach of the worst of what they call disinformation super spreaders. Um, people are identifying uh, people who, uh, oh, are not exactly being truthful about uh, these matters. 
finding the worst cases of that and then trying to limit the amount of uh, damage and hurt they can do to our country. So this sounds like politics, but it's not. It's a matter of uh, national defense, which is why I do work with national defense, national security people. So I'm not working with partisans very much. Um, I tend to work with uh, people in uh, intelligence, even law enforcement, as to minimize the spread of this stuff. I also work with people in social media companies, people who want to do the right thing because they just need help convincing their bosses to do the right thing, which is harder than it sounds. Again, the big theme here is that I help people who are good at their job. We know that COVID-19 has affected people and organizations in a variety of ways. On campus, the university has had community investments to help address food insecurity, um, especially with all the unforeseen circumstances. With the philanthropic work of the foundation, how has COVID-19 shifted things or impacted grant making? Okay, in a small way, I've contributed to some efforts wherein people in industries like a hospitality restaurant can get some money. But in a much bigger way, I'm seeing that uh, millions of Americans, possibly tens of millions of Americans, are uh, going to bed hungry. And so I've embarked on a program building a network of food banks, food distributors to get food to people who otherwise uh, might not have enough to eat that day. With the major food groups like World Central Kitchen, Feeding America, DC Central Kitchen, and with the Bob Woodruff Foundation, we've come up with uh, uh, programs to get someone's uh, plate full, let's say during the day, so they have food on the table, then to help fill their pantry so they can uh, be fed tomorrow. And then beyond that, how do we begin to address uh, structural problems in our system, which keep people, uh, I would say, permanently in food insecurity. A lot of that work is through the Bob Woodruff Foundation, which works, well, basically at vets and funds organizations that are good at uh, helping vets and their families. And more specifically, we're funding groups who are good on the ground, getting food to vets and their families who really have er uh, earned it. And food insecurity is maybe one of these grant-making areas that has evolved over time. But since the inception of the foundation, what have been some areas that have evolved or changed based on needs that you and your team are seeing? Well, the food insecurity area is the, uh, the biggest uh, one. Um, let's say applied journalism ethics the ethics of news distribution that has grown out of there as I've been educated by the people who know a lot more about this stuff. The deal is to prevent uh, gaming the ref. This is the metaphor from the intelligence community. Basically, uh, people who are really good at disinformation have developed uh, methods by which they can get mainstream news to amplify disinformation sometimes to amplify this information, even as the mainstream news people are saying, this is disinformation. Um, that's the big problem now. How do we prevent uh, people who have good intentions from amplifying the damage from people with bad intentions? And thinking about the broad work, your broad philanthropic work, what have been some key moments of pride when you think about grants that you've given, projects that you've been behind, tell us about some of the rewarding moments in this role. I uh, get a lot of uh, mail to that effect. I guess it's fan mail. For example, uh, among the teachers of the US, I support something called Donors Choose, which makes it easy for a teacher to put up a project, which could be as simple as getting enough paper and pens for their kids if they're in a poorly funded school district. And through Donors Choose, civilians like us can help fund programs five bucks at a time, 20 bucks at a time. That's the most gratifying on a continuous basis since apparently some hundreds 
of teachers across the country have realized that I will amplify their uh, requests on Twitter. So if you follow my tweet stream, a lot of it is donors choose stuff. If it's not that, it's uh, birds or me making a joke about my uh, vaccine, uh, stuff like that. I do support some pretty heavy efforts this way uh, in some of the areas we've been discussing. Uh, and it also includes sometimes uh, pigeon rescue. Craig, we wanna thank you for joining us today and sharing more about that work you're doing with Craig Newmark Philanthropies and for providing direct support to Case Western Reserve University's Women in Tech Initiative. On behalf of the university, it was an honor and pleasure to sit down and talk with you. Thank you. Hey, it's my pleasure, thanks.